Lesson 14. If you have the opportunity to gain a favor, take it. Voidfall is a bustling metropolis all on its own. But unlike most other cities, it doesn't turn on currency. It turns on information. Secrets whispered in dark corners and behind flicking fans, passed back and forth like stockbrokers making a deal of a lifetime. It was one of the first things Maliri taught him, drilling it into his head to keep his secrets close upon pain of death, but hoarding everyone else's closer, that he should kill to get them. I don't want to hurt anyone, Rambu whispered, horrified, flinched when Maliri cracked her crop into the desk at his back talk and slurred words, raising above him like the towering black clouds of a sandstorm. What you want is trivial. You are not just yourself. You represent your entire family, the royal line, and I will be damned before I ever see that disgraced. Rampu knew better than to argue with her. Sit down, be quiet, know your place. Curled into himself and nodded his head, pulse stuttering fast and wild at the cold brush of leather under his chin, forcing his head up. You are the last of eight, your highness. Nothing in your life is going to be easy, so I won't be either. But I will show you how to survive. He's tasked with finding information on his classmates. Comes back crying the first few times because of how bad he feels. Digging through their things and using his title to scare them. But Maliri thunders at him until he stops. Until he shuts it all away and builds a big wall to shield himself. Cowers behind it while she carries on. Not real. Not real. Not real. It's a bad dream. Wake up. Bad dream. Wake up. But he never does. And it gets easier as he gets older. Walls and doors growing and towering and sealing things away easily makes it simple to turn his wicked fast mind on the people around him. Always adored solving puzzles, but now he adores taking them apart. Nobles he has to be careful with. They have minds of their own, but the servants don't, are easily swayed, and Rambu keeps a wary eye on them, learns who belongs to who as he passes them every day, all offering him the same nod, but they never meet his eyes, don't have to, no one respects him, and his lips want to curl. They're always scheming for someone, like little mice scurrying in the walls and he's been working on keeping them out of his business, but it feels like every time he turns around after plugging up a hole, he finds another one, nibbling on something else. It's exhausting. Keeps Ronbu up late into the nights, trying to collect information and favors as fast as he can, but he's the youngest. There's not much left for him, and what he manages to scrape together is paltry in comparison. All he has is a handful of the lowest level of servants, Ones who would probably turn on him with a single look from any of his elder siblings, if they cared enough to steal his rodents. Weak stack of favors that grants him little besides after-hours access to the library, and perhaps an extra treat from the kitchens. When Resha is named heiress, the last of her restrictions drop away, and everything in the royal wing clams up like skulkers in their shells. And Rambu knows his eldest sister does not favor him knows he's not going to last long with the flimsy connections he has. Rambu's got to do better. Has to find a way to outsmart them all, work with the shit hand he was dealt. Starts spending his sleepless nights teleporting into places he shouldn't be, and learning things no one wants him to know. Finally has things he can leverage with the court. Courtiers start to mind what they say around him, but Rambu finds out anyway. Can think faster than they can sees underneath the underneath like he was born to do it. Steadily, builds up enough of a barricade in between him and his siblings. It's not as impressive a net as Resha's, as Taysen's, as Etru's, as any of them. But it's Ronbu's. And he controls it beautifully. Rips the world out from under the feet of anyone who dares breathe a word against him garners something of a reputation for being able to pick people apart like the loose, crumbling black sandstone of the wastes. Just like his lady mother, Rambu catches servants whispering, and they stare at him in fear as he yells, 
shrink back at his righteous indignation because how dare anyone besmirch her name. She wasn't like the rest of them. She was above it. She was good and kind and caring, and he makes sure neither one of them ever sees the light of day again. He learns how to play this game, how to do this dance, watches for daggers in the gloom and cobras slipped into his bed, sends boxes of scorpions in retaliation to one of his brothers, spikes his third sister's tea with laxatives during a courtship meeting. Each year, the retributions between them all escalating. Servants are dismissed. Some are executed. Courtiers get flung down through the social ladder rungs. A brother breaks his nose. A sister's affair is exposed. Rambu has his incident on the roof. All casualties in a never-ending game of tit-for-tat he and his siblings play, each of them vying for a better position at court, more favor, more time with father, all trying to shove the others under Resha's radar and valiantly trying to keep themselves off it. But no matter what he does, how many people he drags down with him, Rambu never feels safe. Someone accidentally knocks into the back of his chair and all of Ronbu's hair stands up on end. Assassin, mugger, kidnapper, enemy, clear spot over there, at negative 35.8762 and 173.94, one jump, possible. Blaster on hip can get shot off in 0.20 seconds, dead before they hit the ground. But he forces himself to relax, eyes still doing a quick, nervous sweep of the bustling cafe. It's perfectly fine, nothing out of the ordinary, but a few other customers meet his gaze, and anxious energy rolls through him. What are they whispering about? What do they know? Eyes on you. Stop looking at me. Can they see? Can they see what's wrong with you? Has his fingers starting to pick at the skin on his wrist. Realizing what he's doing, what he has half a mind to do to get this squirming feeling out of him, you know you want to. Rambu reaches up and pulls the black marker from its customary spot tucked behind his ear flicks the lid off, and starts drawing. The tip of the marker is soft, glides effortlessly over his skin, doesn't drag and pinch and cut and rip like he wants, but he's making himself be okay with it. Focuses instead on drawing the most complicated diagrams he can think of. Rambu tips his head to the side, trying to find a better angle on sketching out this section of the Asachi's main engine. Clucks his tongue, and wonders if he should get some thinner-tipped markers, just for doing fine lines. He's really absorbed in his work. Everything that's not his sketch pushed out quite nicely on its ass. Only thing he has room to think about are the blueprints on the inner workings of the main engine. Rambu imagines rotating it like it's a 3D model, pinching and zooming in on certain areas, tries to find a good stopping point because his ear flicks, hearing familiar footsteps coming his way. One acidic as shit Yobin latte and- Oh! Oh! Shit, man, that looks awesome! Tupo crows excitedly. Quiet thunks as he sets their drinks and lunch down. But Rambu doesn't look up. Needs all of his concentration for the delicate wiring around the combustion chambers. Lips twitching up, though, when Tubbo hisses. Oh! Oh, sorry, I'll be quiet. It looks good, though. Uh, okay. Shutting up now. So sweet, so kind, love him, love him so much. Karyad, my love, only one for me. Rambu hums happily. Marker flowing elegantly across his forearm. Taps his foot around under the table until he finds Tubbo's. Moves to hook their ankles together. Tail thumping a few times, feeling him press back. Rambu's done a few minutes later. Relatively pleased with how it looks, given the lone marker he has. Holds his arm out for Tubbo, who eagerly scoots closer to get a better view. Half a sandwich stuffed in his mouth as he traces fingers over the dried lines. Dude, you like stupid good at this. Tubbo praises, looking up at Rambu with shining eyes and a bright grin. Always so easily won over by anything to do with their ship. I'm just copying what I see. Rambu tells him with a shrug, color rising in his cheeks. Better at taking compliments from him, but only just barely. Busies himself with his latte, and mumbles around the lip of the cup. It's not like it's real talent or anything. It's just memorization. Bullshit. I could name every part in the Asachi blindfolded and drunk as fuck. But I couldn't do this. Tubbo tells him, 
fingers wrapping a quick tune against the inside of his arm. And normally, Ramvu doesn't like people touching him here. Knows they can feel the bumpy ridges of scars that are still healing. But it's okay if it's him. Different. Different with you, sunshine. Always been different with you. Special with you, my one and only. Slow drag of warm fingers over meticulously drawn lines. Hesitation when they run across a raised scar. Quick swipe of a thumb before Rambu even has a chance to tense. Quiet, little unspoken gesture of, it's okay. Not ignoring it, know it's there, but it's okay. Don't mind. Love you anyway. Love you despite this. They haven't talked much about it. Mostly because Rambu clams up so fast any time it's brought up. Embarrassed that he regresses that badly. He feels like he needs to have a coherent answer as to why he was doing it. Can't find one for the life of him. But Tubbo never asks for coherency. Takes the stuttering, winding, roundabout nonsense Rambu spits at him like it makes sense. And maybe it does for him. Only person Rambu's known to deal with him as well as he does. And as Tubbo pulls back, done tracing over all the lines, don't go, please. Rambu gets a quick flash of an impulsive idea that makes his tail poof. He spins the marker around between his fingers in consideration before holding it out, voice soft as he says, Would you, um, would, would you want to draw something? He regrets it instantly, because what a stupid thing to say, what a weird question to ask. About to pull his hand back when Tubbo's eyes go wide, one hand already reaching for the marker. Well, are you serious? I, yeah, that'd be cool, but like, only if you're sure. I am. Rambu answers shakily. Let's Tubbo take the marker and then wraps that hand around the back of his neck, jerking his head to the side to hide behind his hair. Can feel his face bleeding a dark purple. Stupid thing to ask. Why would he want? Who wants to touch you? Gross scars. Idiot. Shouldn't have opened your mouth. Shouldn't have... Thoughts grinding to a halt as a warm hand wraps over his wrist gently, holding his arm steady as another gets to work, sketching out something in the spot near his elbow, a third coming up to lace their fingers together. Rambu hums involuntarily as Tubbo drags a thumb along the side of his palm. Loves, loves, loves the fact that Tubbo has four hands. A kind of weird thing to put a lot of importance on, but he can't help it. Adores how both of his hands can be held, while another set scratches through his hair or cups his face. He's never said anything, because he's pretty sure it edges into the territory of being xenophilic. Doesn't ever want to exoticize Tubbo or his people, but it's just so nice. One of the many things Rambu loves about him. Another thing is how Tubbo's so warm all the time, and Rambu sighs in contentment, entire arm pleasantly hot where he's being touched, hand on the back of his neck, unlatching, to prop his heavy head up. Watches through slitted eyes as Tubbo works. This is nothing as important or intensive as working on the Asachi, but he's got that little furrow in his brow anyway. Tongue poked out to the side, hands gentle and careful, leeching, searing heat like sun-baked rocks. Ancients. Rambu wants nothing more than to curl back up in that feeling. Hums a senseless tune that rumbles deep in his chest, mind lazily re-rolling the memories from this morning and the morning before. Every morning for a week now, actually. How is this his life? Where Rambu's woken up tangled around Tubbo, deliriously overheated and happier than he can ever remember being. He knows they shared a bed a lot while he was, uh, not feeling well. But after he went a few days eating regularly and speaking a little, Rambu thought that'd be the end of that, that Tubbo would go back to his own bunk. But he never did. Still slipped into bed behind Ranbu and wormed around until he was comfortable. Rambu wasn't about to complain, loved listening to his quiet, even breaths, snuggled close to the heat he radiated with hardly any guilt, only a little worried at first about keeping Tubbo up with his insomnia. But to Ranbu's immense shock, he started sleeping throughout the night. It's still a little jarring, finding himself waking up every morning and not just the vague realization he needs to get up. But he can't say he minds it. Has noticed he's been getting headaches less frequently, 
relieved to see the dark circles under his eyes clearing up, finally. And yeah, he's feeling better physically, but the biggest change is the one he's the most scared to acknowledge, terrified of jinxing it. And Rambu darts his eyes around the cafe furtively, calling out, Maliri, I'm going to stand up and start defaming the entire line if you don't stop me right now. But nothing answers him. Nothing shows up. He is alone in his hallway, doors silent and behaving themselves, no skeletal faces in the gutters. And his heart rate picks up, hardly daring to believe it could be that simple, that they'd finally gone, that he's free. It's been like this for a few days now, and thinking back, the last time Rambu heard from any of them was before he and Tebo went into that meeting with Techno. But even then, their voices were faint, little more than blurry outlines dancing at the edges of his vision. At the time, he had been petrified over that meeting, worried it was finally going to come to light to everything that was wrong with him, that they were going to drag it out of him. But the specters were gone before he even went in, banished by a warm hand sliding into his. Even without them lurking over his shoulder, Rambu was still nervous talking to Techno regardless of the buffer Tubbo provided. And yet, he somehow managed to get through it in one piece, convinced Techno he was sound enough to have a blaster again, and get them put on the auxiliary roster. Tubbo had practically skipped out of the crime lord's office, so excited to get out of HQ. He was scrolling through the latest missions on his handheld during the lift ride down not even fussing that they were relegated to supply runs for a few days. Think of it like a test run, Techno said from across his desk, speaking more to Tubbo than Ronbu, but he didn't mind, actually glad for it. Just to make sure, uh, everyone's ready to be back out there. And everything's going to be fine. It's their last day of probation, actually. And since Ronbu hasn't lost his mind, Tebo doesn't have any gaping wounds, and the Asachi is in excellent shape. As soon as they get home and turn in the report, Techno will bump them back onto the main active duty list, finally free them from boring crap. This mission they just finished here on Poincaré was stupid simple, transporting cargo between a few agricultural districts in the area. And usually, this kind of doldrum assignment drove Tebo up the walls, but he seemed to be enjoying it. He played music too loud in the cockpit, sat with his legs slung over the side of his chair, kicking and batting and pushing at Rambu's feet, the two of them giggling like children while they tried to force the other back. They stopped for fuel in the capital after the last drop-off, and it was such a nice day that instead of leaving right away, Tubbo suggested they go explore for a bit, eagerly linked his arms through one of Rambu's while they strolled down the main boulevard. Raleus was a sprawling city, and yet still choked with trees lining its main streets, old and regal in a way that reminded Rambu a little of Voidfall, but like a reverse image. Where everything on Anvil was cold and dark and sharp, all harsh angles and long, narrowed shapes, the buildings here were gentle sloping lines and creamy colors, delicate metal grating on balconies rusted a rich teal, baskets of vegetation spilling out into the streets and curling around gilded insignias. It was a gorgeous place to be. And the two had only planned to do a little sightseeing, but then Tubbo smelled something coming out of a little striped awning cafe, and they had to make a stop for a late lunch. Rambu very carefully goes to pick up his latte, doesn't want to jostle Tubbo while he's drawing, and takes deep sips of the warm, creamy drink, the slight spice in it coating the back of his throat and heating him up from the inside out. This is some of the best yobin he's had in a while. Maybe since leaving Voidfall. Tastes like a home he's not sure he's ever had. And Rambu drinks it contentedly. Watching light shift outside the cafe's big window. Fingers stroking along the hand in his. A doors feeling two more move across his skin. Remember them in your hair and around your face. Fingers hooked behind your ears. Thumb dragging slow shapes across your cheeks. When he braids your hair... Two working on that, other two rubbing across your shoulders, or resting lightly on your sides. So nice, so nice to be touched, to be loved, to be treated gently. What you thinking about? You're all smiley. Tabo says around a smile of his own, bangs falling into his eyes while he turns back to finishing up his drawing. 
and not really thinking about it. Eyes busy tracing over the looping letters painted on the window. Rambu mumbles. Just love how many hands you have. Wait, what? Wait, 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 did you just- Ancients, you did! What is wrong with you? Who says that? Apologize. Beg forgiveness. Apologize now. By the ancients! His mind screams at him, feeling a little like he's mentally getting shaken around by the shoulders. Stops, though, when a surprised laugh busts out of Tubbo, eyes crinkling around a smile as he snaps his head up. Really? Yeah, but I, um, uh, I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm, I, I didn't mean it, like, you know, not trying to be weird or anything. I, I just... Rambu stammers, ears flattening to his skull, trying to hide how purple they are. Can't do jack shit about the color staining his face furiously. Kind of wishes the earth would swallow him whole. Fuck, can't believe you said that. Xenophile, making it weird. Exoticizing him? Ugh, can't believe you. But Tubbo waves two hands at him, quickly, saying, No, no, it's okay. Really, it's sweet. I, uh, I like how you have a tail. You do? Rambu asks, bewildered, and the appendage in question flicks briefly. He has no idea what's so great about it. It usually just gets in the way. Easy to grab in fights and get stepped on all the time. But Tubbo nods his head vigorously, red creeping up his neck. Yeah, it's really cute how much you emote with it. The little tuft at the top puffs out sometimes, and and I, uh, it's nice having it, um, you know, like, around my waist. His face is completely red by the end of his sentence, and Tubbo drops the marker to bury his head in two hands, antenna bobbing up and down nervously as he mutters, Queens, what? I, I, sorry, I just, why did you say that like, ugh, sorry. Don't apologize. Rambu rushes out, trying to reassure him, worries it comes across too demanding, and struggles to articulate all the bright, affectionate things curling around in his head. I, I, yeah, I just, uh, it's, it's nice too. I mean, um, like, I like that you like it. I, uh, yeah, I, yeah. Rambu sighs, frustrated with himself and his inability to explain accurately how he's feeling. Wishes he was a touch telepath in instances like these, where it's very important to convey confusing things simply. But maybe you don't have to with him. He understands you so well, darling. A gentle voice says, and Rambu's ears perk up, relieved she's still here, worried she left with the rest, and Mother laughs sweetly. Never leaving you. Not really. Promised you, darling. Promised I'd always be here. Now talk to him. I like that you like my tail. Rambu says. Starts at the core thought. Works his way out from there. Attempting to untangle this ball of knotted, glittering sunlight. It makes me feel... warm. I don't, um, don't really like a lot of things about myself. And hearing you say you do, I... I... It it helps. It helps me feel better about myself. Peeking out from the gaps in his fingers, Tubbo slowly starts to lower his hands. Face still red, but he looks less mortified. Voice soft and unsure when he asks, Really? Yeah. It makes me happy. Knowing I do things that I... That make you feel nice. Like, appreciated and loved, I guess. Um, yeah, sorry, I just... Words are hard. Rambu exhales in exasperation, tipping his head back, but glances down when he hears a snort, tensions winding out of him as Tubbo drops his hands. You're telling me. Fuck words. He holds out a fist. And this is another thing Rambu's seen syndicate members do. Brings his own up and lightly bumps their fists together. Meets Tubbo's shining eyes and reiterates. Awkwards. That makes Tubbo laugh. And he pulls his fist back, resting his arms on the table. Sheepish look on his face as he says. But yeah, um, thanks for like, not thinking I'm weird for saying stupid mushy shit like that. I just, 
I don't know. It just comes out sometimes. I like your stupid mushy shit. Rambu tells him earnestly. And he does. He really does. Reminds him of all the grand, sweeping declarations of love in his romance books. But Teppo rolls his eyes. Smirk, pulling his lips up. Oh? Want me to woo you or something, boo boy? Oh, what a stupid thing to say. What an absolutely horrible, wonderful, stupid thing to say. Because now, Rambu can't stop imagining Tubbo saying some of those lines he holds so near and dear. Professing his undying love under a field of stars, ducks his head and mumbles, You don't have to. I'm not sure I know how. Don't really know much about Ender culture, if I'm being honest. Tubbo says with an easy laugh. And Rambu shrugs, runs the edge of a claw around the lip of his cup. It's not that different from Nerox, honestly. Few quirks here and there, but I grew up in the palace, so things were... different. Things are a lot more quiet after that. Just the hustle and bustle of the cafe around them. Soft, syrupy language of the locals flowing easily. Thick and rich, in a way Rambu knows he'd have a bitch of a time trying to speak it. At the continued silence, he worries he's drugged the mood of their afternoon down about to apologize when Tubbo asks, Do you ever want to talk about it? About enderculture? Rambu tries, purposefully misunderstanding, knows what he's really referring to. Cold nights, empty hallways, backs of heads and sharp claws and slitted eyes. Grimaces as Tubbo says, No, I mean, if you want, sure, I'm all ears, but I meant the palace. About growing up there, everything that happened. Blowing air hard out of his nose, Rambu skates his claws along the glazed ceramic of the latte cup, stops when they make a light, shrieking noise, and tucks his hand under the table. Talking about Voidfall is one of the last things he wants to do. Doesn't see much worth in dragging out all the horrible things that happened. Knows there's no way to change it. Would just make whoever he's telling feel bad. Especially doesn't want to burden Tubbo with this. It's all in the past. Shouldn't matter. But it affects you even now. Everything you're dealing with is because of then, yeah, but can't change any of it. Why talk about it? Remember what Dream said? How it helped him not feel so alone? I don't know. I don't know. Can't. Won't. It'd make him sad. Never told a soul. Rambu jolts at the warm touch that wraps around his hand under the table. Only realizing then... His claws have been picking at the skin of his palm, shoulders drooping in defeat. Because why does he keep doing this? He doesn't want to, so why? Hey, Stelle, it's okay. You don't have to tell me. I know you're a private person, but I just want you to know I'm there, okay? I'll always be here. Tubbo says gently, fingers tangling through Ronbu's, so he'll stop picking at himself. Got your back. Never leaving you. Always be here. And Rambu swallows harshly. I just... None of it's good. And I... I don't want to weigh you down with it. Tubbo's quiet for a minute. And when Rambu sneaks a glance at him, his eyes are unfocused, teeth chewing absentmindedly on a thumb. Notices he's being watched and lets it go. Begins slow, like he's put a lot of thought into it. I understand that feeling. I don't like talking about... about my stuff, either, unless it's family. And I was... um... like... uh... Wow, this is a lot harder to say than I thought. He sucks in a big gulp of air, and stares Ronbu directly in the eyes, squeezes their hands together for good measure. And I was hoping I could be that for you. Someone safe. Like... family. Long series of photographs hung up on the wall. Smiling faces and laughing dark eyes gathered together around big tables, arms draped over one another. And Rambu's avoided that word a lot in his life. Has never meant anything but pain and anxiety and expectations to him. But he doesn't think he'd mind it if it's anything like Tubbo knows it to mean. And they're married, making them family by law. But Rambu hasn't really been considering Tubbo like he's a place of refuge. Has been holding him at arm's length, 
keeping him away from everything Rambu deems unsightly. But maybe he doesn't have to. Maybe he can trust just a little bit. Showed his physical scars and Tubbo didn't leave him. He stayed. He's still here, sitting next to Ronbu in a little Raylacian cafe, chair scooted as close as he can get, thumb dragging warm shapes over the hand that was picking its skin like a blight. Got your back. And Ronbu takes a deep breath, means it when he whispers, You already are. My family, I mean, I love you. I love you too. Tubbo says with no hesitation. Tips his head to the side, carry a bead flashing around the side of his ear. My bead, my bead on his braid, my husband, my carriad. And it's the little nudge Rambu needs. Words starting to tumble free. Um, Voidfall was a nightmare. It, it twisted everything to the point that living there was just an ongoing anxiety attack. Always had to be on your toes. Tracking everything out of the corner of your eyes. Long list of people that you hated, that hated you, trying desperately to be a step ahead of them. Rambu wets his dry lips and shakes his head, looking away from Tubbo's tender eyes, stares down at the tabletop. I... They always told us that's how it was, that it was to keep us safe, and they weren't entirely wrong. That place was a cesspit. Shown how to minimize bleeding from a young age, quick sign of poison and things... Taught to never turn your back? Claws at the ready. How fast could you teleport? Stab them in the back before they get you. And his eyes drift from the table to where his left arm is still stretched out, even though Tubbo's been done drawing for a while. They raised me to be a monster, and I don't want to be like that anymore, but... But, but I'm, I'm terrified I am. That this is it. That it went too deep. That I can't escape. That this... Is me. Nestled right near the crook of his elbow is a bee inside a hexagon. Simplified in its design, but drawn with smooth, crisp lines, wings flared out to the side and filled in with hair thin veins. And Ronbu untangles their hands so he can touch it, fingertips smoothing over it lovingly. I never told you what I saw on Bosnor. He murmurs voice gone thick with the emotions rising in his chest, staring at this little bit of tubbo he's been given, is already mourning it rubbing off, and wraps a hand around it protectively. No. Tubbo answers hoarsely, clears his throat, and scoots closer until their legs are pressed together. Les said... She said it was supposed to be like a final test, right? F for the initiates. Your greatest fear... Greatest fear, greatest nightmare, an absolute terror, worst thing you could ever imagine. Looks up from the little bee drawing, elegant and beautiful and perfect. Stares at the person who made it, kind, loving, everything you're not. The person he loves more than anything, the one he'd die for. Whispers brokenly, It, um, it was you. It was you, Tubbo, and this... I, I was... I hurt you, like on... Um, like on Immuna, but worse. So much worse. I told you to... T I was them, Bo. I became them. You're not. Tubbo stresses, darting forward and cupping his face in a searing palm, fingers curling behind his ear. I'm sorry, I know I interrupted, but queens of fucking ages past, you're not. You're nothing like them, Ronbu. You know what the statistics say. A third of... Abu of... Of, um, of uh, abuse victims. It's a horrible struggle to get the words out. Rest of it choked off by dread. And Tubbo speaking fast over him, eyes on fire. Hand starting to shake where it grips his face. No! No! Fuck that! That's not you. That's some dumb fucking number. It's not you. Sniffling hard, Rambu breaks eye contact. Doesn't want to start crying in public. But his head is gently tipped back up, face cradled in two warm hands. You're not an abuser. You're not. 
And when you lashed out at me on Immuna, that was partially my fault. I was backing you into a corner and I knew it. He wants to argue. Is going to. But Tubbo lifts one of his hands, tucks hair behind his ear and strokes along his braid, fiddling with the bead at the end. I'm so sorry, Boo. We hardly knew each other. I shouldn't have tried to make you talk to me before you were ready. Don't make... Don't make excuses for me. Rambu chokes out, clamps his mouth shut because his voice pitches up at the end, betraying the sobs that are bubbling in his throat, knows there's nothing that makes what he said okay, how he did it on purpose, how he looked Tubbo in the eyes and knew he cared for him, but shoved it out and went after him anyway. I know. I know. I know it was wrong. You know it was wrong. So it's not an excuse, it's an allotment. You were scared. I made you scared. You were just trying to protect yourself. Tubbo tells him, gentler than he deserves, hand wrapping briefly around his bead, like your hand so long ago. Don't leave. Please stay. You have been through actual hell. They hurt you so much, it made you think that was okay. But you're safe now. You can finally heal. Eyes drifting down to his slashed-up arm, black lines masking some of the damage but not erasing it. Thinking back to the weeks he was comatose, kept waiting to die. How he flew off the handle, nearly killed someone with his bare hands. Rambu can't stop the sob that tumbles free. Shakes his head emphatically. I'm not, though. I keep get getting worse. That's not true. You've been so much better. You've been more open with me. You're making friends. You're actively trying to move past your trauma. You smile so much more now, have you noticed? Tubbo says softly, fingers brushing across Rambu's cheek, and he leans into the touch, wants to believe him so badly. It takes time, yeah, but you've come so far so quickly, it's amazing. You're incredible, Rambu. One in a million. I love you so much. I love you too. Rambu hushes, clearing his throat roughly a few times, instincts telling him Tubbo's lying, that he's deluded, crazy, making things up. But there's a voice he hasn't heard aloud in years, whispering, wouldn't lie to you. He's your Karyad. Have to trust him. Should trust him. He's your one, your other half. We'll always be there for you. We'll love you no matter what. It's written in the stars, in your veins, in his eyes. And it goes against everything he was taught. But Rambu decides to trust it. Trust Tubbo. Takes his words and overwrites the ones that have been swimming like dark shadows under murky waters. Abuser, abuser, abuser. Getting replaced with not you. And so much better. And you're incredible. Warbles brokenly in the back of his throat. I love you. I love you. I, I wanted to tell you for so long. Tabo shifts forwards and wraps him in a hug. One set of arms going around his neck, the other around his waist. And Rambu shudders, practically melting into the warmth he radiates. The safety, the love. Home. You're home like this. Never want to be anywhere else. Tubbo murmuring right by his ear. Me too. The suns started to go down by the time they leave the cafe, painting the sky rich reds and purples, blushing all of the light-colored buildings varying shades of pink. And Rambu's lost in thought. Doesn't exactly feel better, but certainly doesn't feel worse. And maybe that's what everyone always meant. Talking about it didn't magically fix everything. He's still scared and haunted by things, dealing with the aftermath, but it didn't destroy anything either. And that thought does make him feel better. He's staying. Rambu realizes what feels like very belatedly, staring down at Tubbo's head where they walk side by side. He's really, actually staying with me. And remembering their earlier conversation... Swings his tail up, curls it around Tubbo's waist, and gently tugs him against his side. 
Tubbo looks up at him, and even in the pink light, Rambu can tell he's embarrassed. But he doesn't move away. Hesitantly moves his left arms to hold him as well, fingers scratching a little at his sides. So? Tubbo begins, in a tone that is trying hard to be casual, and failing miserably. Won't meet Ronbu's eyes when he looks at him in question, just tips his head to the side. It's almost the 85th of dig... dig what... fuck, whatever. Eventide. It's almost the 85th of eventide. Ronbu runs it back in his mind and does the conversions from animal's rotation cycle relative to HQ's. Is shocked when Tubbo's right. It is the 85th in a few days. It's his name day in a few days. An entire year has passed, and Rambu could not have predicted this is where he would have ended up. Light years away from the Academy, from Voidfall, married to his best friend, working for the Syndicate and exploring the galaxy with his Karyad by his side. Wow. He murmurs, a little choked up, reeling over how much can change in less than a year. Jostled out of his reminiscing when Tubbo coughs, obvious and fake. Yeah, and I, uh, I kind of had this idea, but, um, I I'm realizing now, uh, surprise might not be what you prefer, so, yeah, but anyway, I kind of maybe have sort of a party planned. Snapping his head down, Rambu opens his mouth, lost for a second in glittering lights, glittering daggers, fake smiles presented to you on the dance floor, whispering behind your back, no you can hear. Look, it's a little odd-eyed, insane prince. Finally manages. W what kind of party? Just something small. Few friends. Anyone you want to invite, really. But if that's not something you'd like, that's okay, too. Tabo says. Finally looking at him. And he's never been good at hiding his emotions. Has never had to be. Earnest honesty in his eyes and gentle smile. Birthday's a kind of a big thing at my house. I just want to make you feel special, but it's whatever you want, Stelle. Whatever he wants? In the past, it would have been to see his father, maybe get five minutes of his undivided attention. But now, Rambu's not sure. Lie, know exactly what you'd want, but too afraid to ask for it. Know you're entitled, spoiled, selfish. And he grimaces, fingers flexing because they want to go for his arms and can't. You don't need to do that for me. I'm fine not doing anything, really. He says, lightly. Smiles, but it doesn't reach his eyes, and he can't force it to. Bemoans the days where he could, as Tubbo's brows furrow. Okay, but is that what you want? Or what you think you should want? I want to wake up in bed next to you. I want to listen to all the ways you love me. I want you to give me compliments and play with my hair and spend the day with me. Rambu thinks, desperately, ears bobbing down with nerves just hearing it in his head. Knows it sounds hopelessly needy and clingy. But Tebo's staring at him, waiting for an answer. And he shrugs, dropping his eyes. I I'm fine, I pro- Stelladore. Rambu glances up at that warning tone. Sees Tebo smiling at him in exasperation. Stern set to his brows, but affection in his eyes. Figures he can compromise a little, and tips his head back and forth. I just, um, I just like to spend the day with you. Of course, Boo. No problem at all. Would you want to see anyone later? Ozzy? Dream and the others? Tepo hedges. Clear this is important to him. And the idea of him doing things for Ron Boo, organizing a whole event for him, no matter how small, makes his tail bristle in nerves. He's not sure how many people know who he really is. Ronbu Ziotad, third of his name, eighth prince of Ender, and eleventh in line. But he's hyper-aware of making sure he doesn't come across as spoiled, or like he expects anything to be handed to him, like he needs special treatment. And all this party sounds like to Ronbu is a chance for people to figure that out, to put two and two together, look at him and go, huh, you know what? He is nothing more than a whiny brat, thinks the whole universe revolves around him. But Tubbo wants to throw him a party. As insane as that sounds. For some reason, this matters to him. Celebrating Ronbu's name day with a group of people. 
and he's trying to hide it, but there's a pleading light in his eyes, and Rambu caves, has never been able to say no to him. Y yeah, that'd be nice. Um, j just small, okay? N nothing major. He relents, and Tubbo tries to stop how he bounces in excitement, but Rambu can see the way his wings flare wide open for a minute, smiles at the palpable joy he seems to radiate. Yes, you sure? Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, no worries. We'll do small, just a couple people from the hole, things like that, and then I was going to make... Tubbo clicks his mouth shut, fast, grins up at Rambu with a sly smirk, and wags a finger back and forth at his questioning look. Nuh-uh, no more secrets for you, birthday boy. I'm going to spoil you rotten. Rambu's heart lurches painfully, lungs constricting tight as wind roars in his ears, feet stumbling for just a second because he's back up there. Can see Silel Niad spread out before him, end crystals and black sands as far as the horizon stretches, shakes his head because it's not real. He's not there. Calm down, get a grip, you're fine. Said he was going to spoil you rotten. What a joke. Doesn't he know you're already there? A deep voice intones off to his left, and Rambu spins on his heel, pulse jackhammering loud under his skin, but there's no one there. There's no one there. He's hearing things. He's always hearing things. But no, he got rid of them. He's imagining things. Aren't you always, poor little psychopath? Shrieking laughter, and he jerks around to stare wide-eyed behind him, but the path is empty. Just the setting suns turning everything a rich purple, just like the ends of her dress. Last of the light sliding out of the sky. And he's okay. He's okay. He's okay. They're not there. He's fine. They're gone. Right, right, right. Jumps about a foot in the air, hearing, Hey, you okay? Thank the ancients. But when Rambu trips to look over his shoulder, there's a corporal body standing there. And he can breathe for a second. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. All in your head. It's okay. Calm down. Then registers the concern set to Tubbo's face and realizes he needs to do damage control. Now. Y yeah yeah I'm fine. Rambu forces out evenly, tight grip on his vocal cords, and makes sure they don't waver. Keeps his arms still at his sides and takes the shaking fear deep inside, lets it rock his hallway, loose dust and stones raining down around him while he smiles. Sorry. You know how sensitive my ears are. Some piece of machinery hit a hole in the road a few streets over. Sounded like blaster fires all. Believe it. Don't ask questions. Just take it. Accept it. Trust me. Shouldn't trust me, but do it anyway. And Tebo wavers for a second. Eyes darting around like he's not sure. Like he can see. Like he knows. But he relents. He relents. He buys it. He doesn't ask. Tips his head side to side. Yeah. Okay, boo. Sorry it spooked you so bad. Let's get back, yeah? Rambu hums his agreement, steps up to Tubbo's side and wiggles his tail back around his waist as they head down the sidewalk again, trying to recapture some of the contentment from earlier. But Rambu's struggling too. Even after Tubbo tucks two arms across his back, rolls his neck agitatedly, and can't shake the feeling of claws curling over his shoulders. Lesson 36. Being vulnerable is weak. Being weak is a death sentence. But he's so alone it hurts. The lesson is really dragging today. Rambu not paying attention like he's supposed to where Maliri's writing up on the blackboard. Staring off into space in a gray haze that's been clouding his head on and off for a year now. Today is an extra hazy day. And Rambu hadn't wanted to get out of bed stayed curled up in his nest of pillows, ignored the servants calling for him until the head maid servant had to come in and pull him out herself. His tail drags behind him slowly at the memory. How her hands under his arms felt so good. Somehow managed to banish the full body aches he's been having. Pain settling in his arms and legs like he's sick. The doctors say he's fine whenever they're summoned to check on him. Sat him down once and had a very confusing conversation on how grief affects everyone differently. But Rambu hadn't really understood, and they didn't really care to help him understand. The pain's been creeping up on Rambu again since this morning, 
and it's making it hard to focus. Shivery, cold twinges rattling up and down his spine. Queasy pang in his nerves, like he's scared, but there's nothing to be scared. Shrill beeping that you drown out with your screams, hands hauling you away. Last image you see of her, disappearing behind a crush of bodies. No, no, no! Take me back, take me back! No, let me go too! Rampu jolts at the sharp crack against his desk, turns guilty eyes up to a glowering Maliri, and bows his head, voice catching as he tries to apologize. So, sorry, governess, I- Stop stuttering, and pay attention! It's unbecoming for a prince to be so inarticulate! She barks, and Rambu nods his head because he knows. And he used to be doing better, but it's just gotten bad again for some reason. Maybe because you don't speak so much now that... M now that she's... Whatever he was thinking gets garbled up with crackling static. And Rambu feels like he slips out of his body, floats somewhere up by the rafters as Maliri turns to finish the lesson. Whatever's been left behind in his head, answering her questions without any input from him. Rambu floats, lost. Thinks he might be asleep or something. But no, that's not right. His nights are plagued with horrible images of people crumbling to dust in front of him. Everyone he cares for slipping out of his hands no matter how hard he holds on. And there's nothing like that here. It's nice. It doesn't hurt. He doesn't really want to leave. But inevitably, Ronbu does. Floats back down only as they're ending for the day. Feels like he's blinking awake and winces because everything hurts now. On your feet, your highness, Maliri orders, and he stumbles up automatically, stands by his desk and tries to control his shaking while she goes to wipe the board clean. We'll only dismiss him once the chores are done. There's a desperate, clawing ache consuming him. Seems to come from his bones and it hurts so much. Have to make it stop. Ancients, it hurts. He's scared. Wants it to stop. Please make it stop. Mind helpfully reminding him of earlier. Made servant's hands under your arms. It helped. It made it stop. Try it again. Sees one of Maliri's hands hanging by her side as she cleans the chalkboard, and hesitantly slinks up to her. For a second, everything's fine as he wraps his fingers around hers, but then her hand is gone, ripped out of his grip like she's been burned, and Maliri whirls on him, Livid fire in her eyes as she demands archly. What, in the name of the void below, do you think you are doing? I, I, I just, I, sorry, I, I just, I, it, it hurts. Rabu frantically tries to explain, curling his hands up to his chest so they won't reach for her again, and backs away as she slices a hand through the air. It hurts? That's your explanation? Ancients of the Deep, I am not your late Queen Mother. I am not here to coddle you and make you weak, do you understand me? He doesn't. He doesn't understand anything. Doesn't know why his body hurts, why his brain can't think. Wants his mama. Wants to cry. Knows he's not allowed to. Jerkily nods his head anyway, but Maliri sighs, like she can tell he's lying. Fixes him with a stern glare. Almost half a century raising royal children, and I have never lost a charge. And I do not intend to break that record with you. Don't ever be so familiar with me again. Y yes, ma'am. Robert whispers, because that's a safe answer. And Maliri dismisses him with a flick of her wrist. Doesn't tut as he cuts a perfect bow for once, scuttling out of the study before he can break down, crying. Every step back to his chambers jostles and irritates the pulsating pain settled under his ribs, in his joints, has Ranbu sniffing pathetically as he reaches out frantically for anyone that strays near him a second too long. Serving girls pry him off like he's an endermite, shake their heads and flee down the hall. The guards won't even stop, sweep past on their way somewhere else. Footmen dodge him. Handmaids break eye contact. Other courtiers recoil as if he's diseased, tittering behind fans as he staggers into his room, slamming the door shut behind him. Sliding down to sit on the floor, 
Rambu sobs, arms wrapping tight around himself trying to find some comfort because no one will touch him. They won't hold him or ruffle his hair. Nobody wants him. Has anyone ever? Mama does. Mama has. Mama did. But she's gone. She's gone. And he's alone. He's so very alone. And he wails, shaking hands, frantically petting through his hair. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. Doesn't feel like when Mama did it, feels like nothing. And his claws bite into his scalp, bright hot pain that flares out and cuts through the weeping, tearing agony in his chest. Zeroes his mind in on that instead. Pressing in harder, Rambu forces himself to get his breathing under control and tips his head up to gaze out at his empty room. His lower lip wobbles again. Alone, 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 so alone. Everything hurts, you're alone. Squeezes his eyes shut, and imagines there's someone sitting across from him. Wavering, gossamer outline of someone that tilts their head in sorrow, moving to sit next to him, arm falling around his shoulders. Tell me a story. Rambu hiccups, slumping over into the contact, into the door frame. No, no, it's a shoulder. It's the warm side of someone. Trills brokenly as a hand cards through his hair. Too small. No, it's not. It's big. It's safe. It cares for you. Sniffles, quieting down as he listens to a smooth voice that sounds like nothing. Tell him a story he's heard before, but that's okay. Someone's there, and nothing else matters. Mornings have become his absolute favorite, and it's weird, because Rambu always considered himself a night owl before, or just a never-slept owl. But now he loves the mornings, looks forward to cracking, bleary eyes open and seeing a mop of dark hair smooshed into the pillow next to his every day. It's no different today, and he trills sleepily and happy at Tubbo's peaceful face, wiggles closer and tangles their legs up, tail wrapping around his waist to help pull him in. Rambu shifts his head down and brings their foreheads together, tries to be gentle, nuzzling Tubbo so he doesn't wake him up, and Tubbo grumbles petulantly in his sleep, the sound smoothing out into something more fond before Rambu can draw back, semi-coherent words mumbled into his pillow. Mote stele amor his apian's still not perfect, but Rambu's been trying to pick up more in his free time. Recognizes a few of the words whispered into the overall quiet of their dorm. Purrs rumbling deep in his chest hearing, I love you, fall out of Tubbo's unconscious mouth. Rambu snuggles closer, takes Tubbo in his arms and cards careful claws through his hair, murmuring unbearably sweet in Endyrian. Love you so much. You make every day worth it. I could live a thousand lives and never be happier than I am having you in my arms. Love you, sunshine. Love you so much. At the sound of his voice, Tubbo starts shifting, whines in the back of his throat, and Rambu loosens his hold, smiles mushily watching his face scrunch up as he stretches. Twisting so his wings can flare all the way open, Tubbo presses into Rambu's hands, and very, very lightly, Rambu runs fingertips over where they connect to his back, feels him shiver in response. Good morning. Rambu whispers, smiling when dark blue eyes crack open, haze in them gone after a few blinks, corners crinkling in an answering smile as Tubbo mumbles. Good morning, birthday boy. Happy name day. He remembered. He remembered. He remembered first thing out of his mouth. On his mind, he thinks about you, knows things about you, he remembered. Rambu thinks in giddy surprise, smile growing to bare all his teeth as he scoots forwards to rub their foreheads together again, laughing incredulously. Morning, Heowen. You said that already. Tubbo giggles, pressing back into the contact, and stretches his antenna out, flicking the tips of them along Rambu's lone horn. What you want to do today? Rambu hasn't been thinking about it much. Is already more than content with this. 
and he doesn't like asking for things anymore, but some combination of just having woken up, head dizzy from the dregs of sleep, and the heat Tubbo radiates has him sighing, carefree. Dunno, but, but could you play with my hair? P please? Just for a little bit. Done. Tubbo murmurs, two arms wiggling free to reach up and card hands through his hair, fingers detangling as they go, and Rambu sags, boneless, into the mattress, trilling so much it starts to catch weird, forcefully rubs his head into Tubbo's hands and grins at his quiet laughter. You really like this, huh? Yeah, I can't help it. Rambu slurs, words almost entirely lost with the way he's purring ear flicking happily as Tubbo tucks hair behind it. Subconscious response? Kind of brain stuff, precursors, species, things, bonding, I don't know. It's nice. One of Tubbo's hands rubs tenderly around the base of his shattered horn, and Rambu straightens up, warbles in response. Can't stop the way his tail thumps happily from the attention. Sighs without thinking at all. Hmm. Makes me feel safe, cared for, loved. Love you, Hill. Love you so much, only one for me. He almost doesn't hear it, so out of his mind like he is. But as Rambu wiggles closer, resting his forehead against Tubbo's sternum, he can feel that deep, rattling hum he's only ever heard maybe once before. Tries to match it in pitch, Thoughts, an endless stream of Karyad, 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 family, safe, love you, Karyad, mine, yours, safe, love you, mine, yours, 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 forever. They don't get out of bed for a while. Ronbu even kind of falling asleep again under Tubbo's hands, but this time, he comes awake, shrieking involuntarily. There's fingers tickling at his sides mercilessly, and he hisses at a cackling Tubbo tries to get his sluggish limbs to respond fast enough, and they end up play-wrestling, tossing and turning so much in a bid for the upper hand that they go tumbling out of the bunk, yelling. Rambule sprawled on the floor with Tubbo right next to him, the sheets tangled up around their legs in a mess, laughing so hard his chest aches, abdomen jumping under his arm as he turns to look at him, thinks he falls a little more in love, seeing Tubbo with color staining his cheeks. Head tipped back in giddy joy. It's probably the laziest morning they've had in a while. Tubbo tries to get him to make his bed. Their bed. Like he does every morning. And Rambu whines the entire time. Drags his feet and does such a pathetic job, Tubbo pushes him out of the way. But Rambu just hangs off his side and loves the way he smiles. Loves that he can make him smile. The party is planned for later in the day cycle since some people are getting back from missions this afternoon, which leaves Rambu with a good chunk of time he doesn't know what to do with. Usually lets Tubbo make the plans on their off days, but now he's got a pair of lovely eyes fixed on him, wondering what he wants to do. Um, uh, I don't know. Not an acceptable answer. Brows drawn down, got that adorable little stubborn set to his face. Okay, no. Focus. Think of something and Rambu shrugs, uncomfortable to be put on the spot like this, and ruffles a hand absent-mindedly through his hair. Uh, we could go to the range? He suggests it, because they usually do target practice at least once a week. Knows they've both missed their regular session for a while now. His fault, wasn't allowed to have a firearm until recently. But as Rambu's standing in front of the counter... Ears pinned down by insulated headphones, changing power cells out quick and efficient, waiting for the light to come on, he realizes he's excited. With the thick headphones covering his ears, any sounds that came back are muffled and seem to be a thousand miles away, narrowing his focus down entirely to the range in front of him, comforting weight of the blaster in his hands. Anticipation curls hotly in his gut makes his breaths go all shivery with excitement, and when the light blinks on, Rambu doesn't hesitate, raises his arm and fires. Aftershocks travel up his arms, reverberating around his skull and ground him in the moment as his eyes dart from target to target, mind calculating almost too fast to follow, 
his arm moving to the next coordinate in a fraction of a second. Find target. Pinpoint where you want shot to go. Don't blink. Don't breathe. Depress trigger. Recoil. Shuddering. Trembling. Bright red flash. It hit. It hit. It hit! Find next target. Rambu doesn't have space for any other thought as the targets whiz past, heart thundering loudly in his ears, arm tingling pleasantly with the numbing sensation of continued blaster recoil. And nothing else exists right now. It's just him and how fast his mind can work. How steady his hands are. How sharp his eyes. It's just him and the knowledge of what he can do. Bright red snap crackle of blaster rays and another target down. His breathing is steady. His hands steadier. Like the firm press of the earth under his feet. Unflinching and unwavering. Eyes fast, mind faster. So sharp, so quick, so good to him, so good for him. Loves it, loves the way it works. Thinks he might love himself. Only comes tripping back to reality when the blaring green light at the end of the range winks off. Sets his blaster down with shaking hands and forces himself to remember where he is. Rambu can hear his name being yelled through the muffled suppression of the headphones. Slings them around his neck and gets jerked around not a second later. Tubbo screaming incoherently as he points excitedly at the scoreboard. The entire syndicate uses the range. All 96 of them. And for all the fantastic marksmen they have, no one's ever gotten a perfect score, closest being Techno himself. Someone whistles. Sounds like Dwayne, it's probably Dwayne. A few others hollering out, congrats and nice shooting, kid, and fuck it up, beanpole. Emotions building painfully warm and excited in his chest. Feels like racing down back alleyways, bounding across the plains of Apidae, waking up next to the love of his life. Beautiful and perfect and everything he's ever wanted. His breathing picks up sharply, elated smile tugging his lips up, spastic shaking trembling up from his hands because that's his name. That's his name up there, sitting pretty right beside a beautiful 9,999. Next closest score, about a thousand away, and too loud laughter tumbles out of Ronbu. Euphoria, making him feel punch-drunk and stupid, because that's him. That's his name. He did that. He's good. He's smart. He loves his brain. He loves himself. Boo! Stale Amote! <laughs> Look! Y you- I- Queen's boss! Love- Tubbo's yelling inarticulately, and Rambu swings around, scoops him up in a hug, and spins them both in a circle. Doesn't care if anyone's staring knocks their foreheads together, and screams happily with him. They go through a couple drills together, standing back to back while targets circle them, but Rambu isn't paying attention to them. Wraps his tail around Tubbo's leg, and purrs, feeling him lean into the contact, rubbing his head in between Rambu's shoulder blades. It's the worst either one of them has ever done. But they leave that section of the range arm in arm, feet stepping into each other's personal space, make something like a game out of it as they awkwardly shuffle across the floor. And Rambu's never been happier in his entire life than when Tubbo squishes his face between two hands out in the locker room. Others, looping behind his back, drags him down to nuzzle their foreheads together, voice elated and soaring as he declares, I am so fucking proud of you. You're the most amazing person who's ever existed and I love you to the ends of time. Rambu makes some noise halfway between a laugh and a sob, slips his hands under Tubbo's wings and hugs him back, thumbs dragging gentle shapes across his jacket, right over where his wings connect, grins like a stupid, giddy idiot, hearing the way Tubbo quietly buzzes involuntarily, and hopes he pronounces it right when he says, Amote con toto corde mia, lusole. Tubbo freezes. And being as close as he is, Rambu sees it immediately when his eyes start to water, knows his attempt was at least understandable, and hums gently as Tubbo surges forwards, burying his face in Rambu's neck. I mean it, Bo. Rambu whispers into his hair right by his ear, holds him close while Tubbo stammers I love yous into his skin, like that's the one thing he was put in this galaxy to do. Lunch is a thing that needs to happen, and by now, 
word of his perfect score has spread. And on the way to the cafeteria, Rambu is assaulted with screaming congratulations and a variety of what he assumes are celebratory noises in people's native cultures. There's so much attention. People smiling at him, telling him he did a good job, that they're impressed, that they're proud. And he doesn't know how to handle it. Shrinks down into his bomber's collar and shyly tells them thank you. He's decently pleased with himself, but it's another thing entirely to hear that other people are. And Rambu wants to take joy in this so badly, but he's not sure it's right. Afraid of being spoiled and self-centered and a hundred other horrible things. A gentle touch at his jaw drags him out of his cycling thoughts, and he looks down to see Tubbo grinning at him, fingers warm under his chin. Hey, chin up. You're now officially the coolest motherfucker here. Own it. But I just... It's not a big deal, really. I just... Rambu trails off, shrugging his shoulders helplessly, and Tubbo moves his hand, fitting it more surely against his cheek. Voice kind. You can be proud of yourself, Boo. You just did something really amazing. Bask in it for a while. You've earned it. It's not really like Tubbo's giving him permission. More like he's showing his acceptance. Letting Ronbu know it's okay. It's okay to be happy. To be proud. To hold his head high and feel warm and excited and stupid when people turn to him. And Ronbu nods. Squares his shoulders. Doesn't hold himself rigid, but holds himself well. Eyes slitting the next time someone offers him praise. By the time they get something to eat... Rambu whining the entire time about how much he hates the replicator. All for the way it makes Tubbo laugh. It's not that much longer until four. Tubbo's returning messages with only a right hand as they head back to their hall. Left hands tied up holding Rambu's, or curled around his arm. Tells him absentmindedly they should probably hit the showers before the party. Are you insinuating I smell bad? Rambu huffs indignantly. Sticking his nose in the air but looks back down at the warm head that tips onto his shoulder, Tubbo grinning up at him impishly. No, just looking out for your best interests, boss man. You've got fantastically awful bedhead. Rambu doesn't even need to check. Has seen his hair in the mornings before he's put anything in it, and shakes the whole mess in Tubbo's direction. Sticks his tongue out after Tubbo does the same. He's getting his stuff together once they get back to the dorm, humming distractedly under his breath, but stops when Tubbo clears his throat, looks over his shoulder and spins to his feet, ears flying up because Tubbo's grinning at him, holding two colorfully wrapped boxes. Happy name day! Tubbo crows, presenting the boxes with a bounce. Gifts, they're gifts, he bought you things, he got you presents. Holds out the bigger one in his lower hands. Here, start with this one, you'll see why. Rambu can't move. He can't move, can't seem to remember how to make his body work. Stands there and awkwardly shuffles his feet together. For some reason, horribly embarrassed and guilty. There's a score of things he wants to say. You didn't have to. I don't need it. I'm not spoiled. I don't deserve it. But he's having a hard time getting his thoughts in order. Some parts want to sink down through the floor. Don't need it. Not spoiled. Not entitled. Others desperate to take the gifts. Gifts, presents, things for you. And still more that feel horrible for being excited in the first place. Spoiled brat. Entitled bitch. Sympathizer. Imperial dog. Tabo's smile doesn't falter as the silence drags on. Instead, slips into something a little less exuberant. Softer. Staring at where Ronbu has his hands all snarled up together over his chest steps forward and says gently, If it makes you feel better, this one's from my mom, but we both wanted to do something for you, okay? They're small things anyway, no big deal, Stella Dore. It does not make Rambu feel better, knowing one came from Sisson. Why would she do that? I'm nothing to her. Don't need things, not entitled, trying not to be at least. And he doesn't want to take it, but Rambu knows it would be unbearably rude to refuse. His head nods of its own accord. 
and he stumbles until his legs hit the edge of the bunk and he can flop backwards. Let's Tubbo set the larger box in his lap as he sits down next to him. Horrid thing, spoiled brat, whispers in his ears, and the tips of them flick spastically. Entitled bitch, thinks they have to buy you things to keep you happy. Claws scratching at his shoulders, and Rambu twitches. Darts a glance behind him, but there's nothing there. He knows there's not, so then why is this happening? He's fine. He's happy. He got rid of her. You all right, Boo? And Rambu whips back around, face heating self-consciously as he resolutely refuses to make eye contact with Tubbo. Stares down at the bright colored wrapping paper, random little squiggles on a vibrant blue background, and stammers. I'm fine, just nervous, I guess. The bed dips a little, and then there's a warm weight settling around his waist, fingers stroking gently at his sides. I understand, and it's 100% okay if you don't want to open anything right now. I knew you wouldn't want to in front of everyone, but I was, um, hoping it'd be okay, just the two of us. Knows you so well. All the way down to your core, all the cracks, all the flaws, all the fissures, loves you anyway. And Rambu leans into Tubbo, dropping his head to rest on his, antenna flicking out to the side to give him space, huffs quietly as his claws worry at the paper. I just... Uh, I just know I don't deserve this. You deserve the universe, Tubbo tells him matter-of-factly. And he does this sometimes, just says shit casually like it doesn't rock Rambu to his core. Like it's the simplest of truths, and not the most earth-shattering thing he's ever heard. How can you think that? Rambu turns his face and presses his nose into Tubbo's hair, lips twitching when an antenna baps into him lightly. Whatever led you to that conclusion? Don't deserve it? Never have deserved you. Thank you for deciding I'm worth something. Thank you for staying. Thank you for loving me. All of me. Somehow. Some way, you do. And I'm so grateful every day. Come on, birthday boy. Tubbo murmurs, one of his hands finding where Ronbu's are resting on the package, takes them and presses his fingers down lightly, pricking the paper with his claws. Present time. Together, they unwrap the box. And maybe it's a little silly, but Ronbu doesn't feel as bad since Tubbo's doing it with him can trick his brain into thinking that this isn't about only him. Pulls the cardboard flaps open and digs through layers of tissue paper. When he finally gets to what the gift actually is, Ronbu full-on stops, stares at it with his mouth dropping open, knows this isn't any small thing. Very gently, and very carefully, like it's spun of the most expensive, most precious material, he pulls the garment out, lets the sky-blue fabric unfold to its true size, stares in wonder at the sunflowers embroidered across it, little butterflies here and there, diamond-shaped stars in a thick band along the hem of the skirt. Rambu touches lightly at the thick green stalks of the sunflowers, traces fingertips up to their sunny yellow petals, thumbs tenderly at the cream-colored wings of a butterfly and doesn't know what to say. Looks over at Tubbo a bit helplessly. She started making it after we left. Tubbo explains, touching lightly at the fabric, gets a wicked smile on his face and laughs good-naturedly. Apparently when we, uh, stumbled home fucking hammered, you wouldn't stop telling her how much you liked the skirt, so she made you one and- Oh, here, card. Tubbo hands him an off-white piece of paper with dried flowers pressed into the front, and Ronbu opens it in a haze, eyes darting over it reverentially, can see in his mind's eye Sisson sitting down at their long kitchen table, writing this out, with Benson snoozing at her feet. Crurito! Happy birth- Name day. Name day. I swear, Bose told me a hundred times and I still forget. Mom brain. But anyway, I hope you're having a wonderful day, Ronbu. Sorry I can't be there to give you a hug, but tell Bo to do it for me, or I'm mailing you all his journals from primary school. Also, I hope the skirt fits okay. 
I just used the same pattern as the other, but let me know if it needs altering, Dulcito. Hope you're staying safe out there. Benson and I send all our best wishes. Sisson. Folding the card back together, Rambu strokes fingers along its edges, aching pain in his chest because he misses her so much. Is a little surprised with himself because he hasn't known her long, but it already feels like Sisson's made a small home for herself in his heart. She's unique in the way a lot of people in his life nowadays are. Showed him such care and compassion right from the start. Made him feel welcome in a place he really didn't belong. And he can see those same feelings in the lines of her words. Rambu can parse what dulcito means from his recent language studies. Sweetie. And his insides melt. Drippy, warm fondness at the endearment. But he still can't figure out crurito. Has to clear his throat a few times before he feels confident asking, What does, um, what does crurito mean? Huh? Oh, it means, like, legs? But an affectionate form. Leggy might be better. Tepo says with a laugh, knocks his knee into Ronbu's, and hums apologetically. Sorry, Mom really likes giving nicknames. Queen's past. Have you ever heard the, like, thousands she calls Benson? It's ridiculous. I don't mind. I like it. Ronbu murmurs, stares down at the heartfelt card in his lap, and the skirt that has affection in every stitch. Knows he's never going to be able to make it up to her. He has absolutely nothing to show his gratitude with, and it's frustrating. Makes his tail flicker in agitation. But colorful squiggles fill Ronbu's vision as Tubbo sets the smaller gift down in his lap, distracting him as fingertips drag off it slowly, his voice low and warm. My turn. Rambu unwraps this one by himself, hands stilling at the sleek black case, has had a lot of experience with jewelry boxes, and flicks a questioning look at Tubbo. But he won't meet his eyes, color on his face as Rambu goes to flip the lid open. Sure, it's just a repurposed box, until he sees what's nestled in satiny cloth. Curse him to the furthest ring and beyond, that little fucking liar. Rambu thinks in dismay not even daring to touch the glittering hair comb. Gilded moonflowers and desert roses, sprays of tiny, silvery gold beads worked into the shape of anadol, graceful sweep of leaves and long, golden threads that hang down the sides, so apparently obvious this cost a small fortune, and is not a small thing. Why? Rambu croaks, Eyes catching on new details every time he rakes them over the comb, stunned by how intricate it is. The flowers worked so delicately from metal they seem real, and he can't help touching a shaking finger to one golden petal. Because I love you and you deserve nice things. Do you like it? Tubbo hushes, tone in no way demanding. And the point isn't if Rambu likes it. He does, he does, he does, he adores it, most beautiful thing he's been given. But the fact that Tubbo shouldn't have done this, and Rambu fires back, whisper quiet. How much did this cost? Doesn't matter, I'm not broke, and I wanted to get you something special. You mean a lot to me, Rambu. Tubbo murmurs, hand moving to wrap around one of Rambu's frozen ones, searing fingertips trailing languorously across his skin. Your hair's getting so long, I thought you might like something pretty to put in it, and I know how much you like jewelry, so... Rambu recoils from the comb like he's been burned, ears flicking back, ashamed he's so easy to read. The spoiled little prince, who's always gotten everything he's ever wanted. Had been hoping he was doing better. Hasn't worn hardly any jewelry in months. Tries to blend in as much as possible. You don't like it, though. Don't feel like yourself. When you catch your reflection, feels like something's not right. A tender voice whispers, and he shakes his head to get rid of it. As always, missing the feeling of earrings swinging around with the motion. Hey, hey, it's okay if you don't like it. We can exchange it, or... Broad line of his shoulders walking out with your book, your present in his hand. Don't take it from me. It's mine. Please don't. And Rambu can't help the way his hands curl protectively over the comb. 
stammering too fast. No. No, I, uh, I, I adore it. I just, I, I don't know what to, I, I can't wear it. I, what do you mean you can't? But Tubbo stops his question, like he's remembered what Rambu doesn't want to. And it was months ago. Who would even remember it except for him and his stupid brain? Broken and dumb and can't forget a single thing. And then Tubbo goes, Is this about what Shijay said to you? Yes, because that's all it took, and my mind hyper-fixated on it instantly, churning out paranoia endlessly. Rambu grimaces, ducking his head and remembers those first few weeks. How he wore his jacket unsurely and earrings proudly. At least until that loud comment in the cafeteria. Damn, who let the little rich boy in here? What are you running from, Daddy? Find out how much you spend? And Rambu had to sit through rounds of laughter that echoed back long and terrible in his head. Packed everything away the next morning and hasn't touched it since. His silence must be answer enough. Because Tubbo snarls under his breath, words spiking sharp and fast as he snaps. That f- Fucking dickhead. I knew I should have beat the shit out of him. Fucking help. Boo, listen to me. Shijay is a fucking moron. Everything they say is bullshit. Was it, though? Rampu mumbles and stares down despondently at where his hands are clawed over the hair comb. Spoiled brat. Entitled bitch. Think everything is yours. Elitist imperial dog. Forces them to drop their rigid posture and pulls back. I am rich, or I was, and I, and I know what that, uh, what that does. No, it makes me spoiled and entitled, and I'm, I'm trying so hard not to be like that anymore. But I. Rambu exhales raggedly, ears drooping sadly at how much he adores the comb, how beautiful he thinks it is, not dissuaded at all by how much it cost, and whispers hoarsely. But I guess I still am. If this is what you thought you had to get me. I didn't buy you this because I thought I had to. I got you it because I wanted to. Do you trust me? It's soft, but it carries so much behind it. And Rambu looks over at Tubbo, gentle set to his mouth, adoration and actual fire in his eyes. Knows he'd follow him into the darkest pits of the void without a second thought. Answers just as quietly, but like it's the only constant in the universe. Of course. Tebo smiles quick and fleeting. Kind, endearing, a thousand loving things just for you, only for you. Face settling into something a little more solemn, but not harsh, as he says. You taking the Codex was entitled and spoiled. And Rambu winces, breaking eye contact because he knows, okay, he remembers, he regrets. But you know that now, and you're not like that anymore. You've moved past it. Snapping his head back, Rambu stares at him wide-eyed. He's lying, he's... he's... But Tubbo said he'd never lie to him, and Rambu promised he'd trust him. So he really has no choice but to believe him. Anxiety starting to chip away under his hands like crumbling sandstone. You liking jewelry and pretty things doesn't mean you're spoiled. It's just a part of who you are, and you shouldn't have to feel ashamed of it. Tubbo's arm tightens around his back, hands splayed out, blazing against his side. I mean, I like collecting shit for my walls and spend way too much on shit parts. That doesn't make me, uh, I don't know, a hoarder or something? That's different. Rambu tries to counter, but Tubbo props his chin up on Rambu's shoulder, firing back jovially. Oh, yeah? Is it because I'm not a prince? Well, how do you know that? I could be, uh, Prince Tubbo the Eighth, kicker of asses and taker of names. He makes himself snort at his own joke, eyes crinkling up as he giggles. Okay, <laughs> okay, so maybe I'd make a bad prince. You'd be a wonderful prince. Ronbu murmurs sincerely, and he really would, a good, proper one, like the ones in the books Ronbu reads, gentle and kind and caring, leans down and brings their foreheads together. You'd make an even better king. 
This close, Rambu can actually feel the uptick in body heat as Tubbo flushes, red bleeding up over his cheeks and the tip of his nose, antenna flicking once or twice. And Tubbo shakes his head, almost dragging their noses together. Queen's past the shit that comes out of your mouth. He shakily laughs, voice wavery like Rambu's never heard it. But before he can ask, Tebo draws back, hands patting him once as they drop away. Come on, shower time. We're gonna be late. They're both quick in the showers, mostly because some problem has come up. It's not a problem. Don't worry, Boo. It is a thing, not a problem. Stop calling it a problem. And Tebo has to go help fix the totally, definitely not a problem problem. Rambo insists Tubbo take five minutes and sit down so they can redo their braids before he leaves, swats at him repeatedly with his tail when he keeps moving to fiddle with his nicer pair of black combat boots. I got a ghost, Tele. Tubbo insists with a laugh, shrugging his bomber on over a light gray shirt, it settling on his shoulders and looking better than it ever has on Ronbu. Turns to give him one last hug on his way out the door. I'll meet you back here in like twenty, okay? I'll just gotta go help with something. Rambu lets him go, with one final swat from his tail. Goes about getting ready like he normally would. Throw on a pair of standard-issue cargo pants and white t-shirt. Call it a day. When he turns around and is faced with the reality of a gorgeous summer sky skirt draped across his bunk. He's kicking his pants off, not a second later. Soft, airy fabric slipping through his hands. Waistband of the skirt settling comfortably over his hips and Rambu spins in a fast circle, happiness bubbling up in his chest all light and excited, seeing the material flare out around his knees. Thank you, Rambu thinks, running his palms lightly over the material, makes absolutely certain not to prick any of the embroidery with his claws. He'll have to go find some proper stationery to write Sis in a thank you card with later, maybe ask Tebo what kind of sweets she favors. See if he can rope Dream into helping him figure out how to bake them. What he has on should be fine to wear out. The skirt is absolutely, breathtakingly gorgeous, but it's not flashy. Won't turn heads like his jewelry does. But Rambu can't make his feet move towards the door. Frozen in place, staring down at the little black box. Mind hyper-aware of where his other one is stashed away, and really wants to. Can't. Bad idea. They'll all look at you, whisper the same things. Spoiled brat. Entitled bitch. Snobby rich boy. Doesn't deserve to be here. Curls around him, like wisps of black sand caught in the wind. And Rambu takes a step back. Halts, though, as a different voice demands. Fuck them. Who cares what they think? You've proven you can do this, that you belong here, same as them. Yeah, well... He tries to argue but the voice bowls him over. You've earned your place, have flown your missions satisfactorily, pay out your share with no complaints. You belong. And Rambu shuffles his feet into a better stance, holds his shoulders steady. You support the organization, you follow their rules, it's your name at the top of the scoreboard in the range. Reaches forward and takes the jewelry box, goes to find the other one he'd hidden away. You're just the same as any of them, Best shot in the entire syndicate. If they have a problem, fuck them. He swaps out his t-shirt for something he hasn't looked at in months. The soft, white top with a high collar, long sleeves ending in tight cuffs at his wrists, teardrop-shaped cutouts edged with green brocade at the shoulders and in the back. It feels surreal, and yet so very familiar. Hooking all his earrings back in, Ears comfortably heavy as they get reaccustomed to the weight. Feels like something he's almost forgotten. Standing in front of the small mirror in their room to fix his hair, Rambu pulls a section of it back and fits the comb in place, leaves his braid free and a few shorter pieces of his bangs that tumble down into his eyes, turns his head to check and see if everything looks all right. For the first time in a long time, he feels okay meeting his eyes in the mirror tips his head and loves seeing warm gold shining against his dark hair, adores the way all his earrings swing at the movement, high collar of his top hiding the scarring on his neck, and grins, elated as it scrunches his eyes up. 
I look nice, he thinks, rotating his head back and forth, admiring his reflection. Stops mid-motion and watches his eyes go wide. Thought he saw something he's only seen in paintings before as he twists his face back into a three-quarters profile. His hair's almost down to his shoulders now, and half pulled back like this. Something about the slope of his nose, the shape of his lips, upturned edge to his eyes. It's eerie. It's comforting. He knows it. And Rambu presses trembling fingers into her high cheekbones, realizes a bit helplessly, I look like my mother. And the thought unwinds what feels like years of tension out of him. Nightmares of father, but with Ron Boo's face, replaced with the knowledge that he favors his mother. Meets his eyes again, and doesn't know how he's never seen hers in them. I care for you. He whispers to the reflection of his mother's slanted gaze. His own eyes. Him. It's him. Care for you. Reaches up, and thumbs gently at her bead capping the end of his braid. Feels a hesitant touch at his right shoulder. The door swishes open then, and Rambu turns automatically, ears wobbling back and forth, and ancients, he's missed this. Missed it so much, what was he thinking? Why did he ever deny himself something so small? Tail whipping behind him happily as Tubbo steps in. Hey, sorry about Balin, I just had to... had... uh... And Tubbo trails off, completely frozen in place, staring wide-eyed at Ronbu. Throat bobbing as he swallows once, voice rough when he mumbles. Retine preterita. Too much? Rambu hedges, head tipping to the side self-consciously. And Tebo lurches forwards, waving all his hands frantically. No! N no! Not at, uh, not at all! I just... Queens, y you look beautiful! I... C can I say that? Sorry, I just... It's okay, I don't mind. I, um, I actually like it when you, uh, compliment. B but, yeah, I really look okay. Rambu spins in a small circle, skirt swishing pleasantly against his knees as he comes to a stop. And Tubbo's eyes are fixed and glassy somewhere around his face, about where the comb is in the back of his hair. Wets his lips before he hushes. You look incredible, Stelle. Fuck. Qu Queens, it's so fitting, Stelle. Starlight, but you outshine them all. Every single one, Stella Dore. That sends warmth curling all through Ron Boo, like the sweet summer breeze on Apide. And he stands up a little straighter, eyes slitting in pleasure with his tail swinging in long sweeps behind him, tone equally subdued as he murmurs, That's so. Finally unsticking his feet from the floor, Tubbo edges closer, hesitantly reaches out with a set of hands, but halts before actually touching Ronbu. Won't until Ronbu steps forward into his arms, lower pair going around his waist, upper around the back of his neck. Fingers tug and play with the long strands of his hair, roll the hanging golden threads of the comb between them, and Ronbu stares directly into Ronbu's eyes as he whispers, you're the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. They head out the door, hand in hand, and Rambu worries he might be running a fever for a while, head dizzy and unfocused, face tingly warm with a pleased flush, can't stop smiling like an idiot as his mind plays back on repeat over and over again. Most beautiful, most beautiful, outshine them all, look incredible, outshine every single one, beautiful. Tebo must think Ronbu won't notice him, sneaking furtive glances every now and then. But he should know better. Ronbu's been trained since birth on the art of looking, and seeing without ever having to turn his head. Can tell what he's doing immediately, and takes pride in the lingering looks. Only worries, though, after Tebo starts fiddling around with the edge of his shirt. You look very handsome. Ronbu says lowly, with an idea of what might be bothering him. Knows he guessed right as Tubbo snaps his head up. Unsure light in his eyes as his mouth pushes to the side. Stubborn set to his face, going to argue. Shouldn't bother, you're right. And Rambu tugs him closer. I mean it, Helwyn. 
Those boots are stylish, and your pants are cut well. Your hair looks nice tonight, and I adore the way it frames your face. But Tubbo still doesn't look that reassured. So, flicking his tail up, Rambu strokes along the ends of his wings, keeps going. I've always liked your syndicate bomber on you. It's very striking. You wear it a lot better than I do. In fact, the first time I saw you, I thought you looked very dashing. Wait, wait, did he just... Shit, he really hadn't meant to say that, ever. But it makes Tubbo light up, mouth dropping open in a surprised smile. What? Really? Y yeah, I just, um... Like when I saw you on the landing pad, I... I, I, I just... Rambu stammers and... Ancients, why did he have to bring it up? Remembers Tubbo standing there like it was yesterday. Messy hair falling into his eyes. Sleek cut of his jacket. Blasters on his hip. Dangerous and beautiful. Lines of the Asachi arching over him. Mumbles, embarrassed. And thought you looked like something out of a book. You know, rakish smuggler kind of thing. A book? What kind of... Ronbu. Ronbu, please, please tell me you're talking about those goofy romance books like Moms Read. Tuppo asks in barely contained glee, and Ronbu refuses to answer him, snaps his head forward and keeps his chin up, furious blush on his face as Tuppo cackles like a madman. Eventually, though, the amusement wears off, and Tuppo tips his head to rest on Ronbu's arm, fingers flexing around his. I love you so much, you dork. And with a great heaving sigh, Rambu squeezes back, tail fondly stroking at gossamer wings. I love you too. Every dorm has a small communal space at the very end where people can go and hang out, get away from their rooms for a little bit. But Tubbo's apparently commandeered the entire space for tonight. Big paper stars hang down from the ceiling, spinning idly in the recycled air system. Long strips of yellow streamers are taped to the walls, glittering sprays of some kind of decorations standing on the tables. And it's nothing grand, but Rambu gets choked up anyway because they all did this for him. There's a couple people hanging around already, Dream animatedly telling some story with George tucked into his side, Sapnap laughing so hard he accidentally sets a nearby star on fire, Ozzy and their partner, Monto, fiddling with something at the front of the room, Couple others Rambu knows Tubbo's close with from the hall. But they all look up when he and Tubbo walk in, loudly greeting disjointedly. Happy name day. Uh, hi. Um, I... Thanks. Rambu stutters awkwardly, not really used to being the center of attention like this. But thankfully, nobody stands up to mob them like he worried they would. Only thing that comes speeding at him like a photon blast, who he was expecting. Kostka! Ozzy shrieks happily, plowing into Ronbu with little inhibition, ramming the top of their skull into the underside of his chin as they hug him. Salutations on this auspicious morn! The beyond loses much without you in it. Hi, Ozzy. Ronbu grimaces, using his free arm to hug them back. Works his jaw because, ow, that kinda hurt and they pull back with a chittering laugh, orange eyes spitting and flickering in the dark sockets of their skull. You look spiffy tonight, guy. I like it and- Oh, congratulations on the high score! You want a drink? I'm making drinks. Uh, sure? Rambu answers and is immediately yanked forwards. Goes tripping after Ozzy as they haul him across the room to a table covered in a shimmering navy cloth. Various bottles set out on top. Mismatch of glasses that look more homey than anything. As it turns out, Ozzy is actually a really good bartender. Flips bottles and shakers easily. Doesn't need to look to catch them on their arms or skull. Can pour out multiple drinks at a time with steady hands and an endless stream of chatter. The drink they hand Ronbu is faintly pink and fizzy, and he takes a hesitant sip of it, sweet floral taste coating the inside of his mouth that tingles from the bubbles and he makes a delighted noise, immediately going back for more. Like it? Ozzy asks, practically bouncing on their toes, shadow ears flickering wildly, and Rambu shrugs, humming around the rim of his glass. It's alright. 
They suck him on the arm. But Ozzy's laughing high and yipping, and Rambu grins. Hangs on to his glass as he's coaxed into playing games with Tubbo and the others. And there's not enough controllers, so he and Tubbo play on a team. Swap off every other round. Rambu doesn't play a lot of video games, but it's easy enough to pick up. And it's nice, sitting wedged in between the searing heat of Tubbo and then Ozzy's stupid pointy elbows, passing controllers back and forth. There's too many people crammed on the couch. Elbows and asses and faces as people get up to bring back more drinks or snacks. Gross, greasy, wonderful bar food from a dozen planets spread out on the table in the back. Has Rambu's mouth watering any time he gets up to grab some more. Totally not biased in his love of the mushroom-packed pastries Tubbo made. It almost reminds him of his freshman year at the academy, when he thought he had friends. But Rambu thinks it might be real this time. Laughing with everyone else as Dream loses horribly and slides off the couch, wailing. Doesn't flinch when hands touch him lightly on the shoulders, people bending down to congratulate him on his shooting score or to offer their well wishes. Accepts drink and food refills that are brought back over, everyone seeming to have some idea of what he likes. They know me. Thought I was the only one paying attention, but they were too. Rambu thinks, dumbfounded. Sipping on another one of Ozzy's cocktails, package of his favorite spicy crackers wedged between him and Tubbo, turns when George asks him something about his new quasar the Sunfleet's been getting readings on, laughs deep in his chest watching Monto try and fail to vault over the back of the couch. Rambu feels like there's stardust in his lungs, lighting up his veins, clouding his eyes and making everything hazy and wonderful. Somehow, he fits onto the couch like he's always belonged, knows it more than anything when two arms go around his shoulders, pulling him closer, and tips his head to rest against Tubbo's. The racing game gets old after a while, and Monto ping-pongs them around between various party games until a few hours in, when everyone's a little more than reasonably tipsy, and someone, Rambu's not sure who, demands they put on karaoke, and is met with uproarious approval. Everything devolves into chaos relatively quickly. There's too many songs that don't translate well into standard, so most of the time, people are wheezing over poorly translated lyrics rather than actually singing. But it ends up not mattering. It's fun. Ancients, it's so much fun. Sitting on the couch by Tubbo and watching Dream try his hand at rapping as fast as he can. He can't. Gets so tongue-tied, he shapeshifts on accident. Zephyr and their partner doing a rendition of some song that has the horribly translated line, Never have is going to and also. That makes the entire room lose it. And Rambu's not drunk, but he's certainly not sober. And the room spins a little and he laughs too loud. Let's Ozzy drag him loose-limbed up front and press a microphone into his hand. Sings cheesy duets from secondary school rom-coms with them. Both of them laughing so hard they're on the verge of crying. Hot and slightly dehydrated, Rambu's up getting something that's not alcohol after that last turn. Sapnap screams singing some love song in the background to a dying George. When arms go around his waist, pointed chin digging into his shoulder blades, and he turns back to look, grinning broad at Tubbo's flushed face. Hey, having fun? Tubbo drawls, sounding also a little over tipsy but it's nowhere close to how they both were during the solstice. And Rambu turns in the circle of his arms, loops his own around Tubbo's neck. Yeah, thank you so, so much, Halwyn. Of course, Stelladore, Tubbo murmurs, stepping closer and propping his head up on Rambu's sternum, beseeching look in his eyes. Wanna dance? To this? Rambu snorts jerking his head to the front of the room and glances over, bursts out laughing at the sight of Sapnap on his knees in front of George, laughing through some gooey lyric that makes George groan and sets Dream off wheezing desperately. Why not? Tubbo asks with a big grin, shuffling back and taking Rambu with him, and fuck it. Rambu can't really think of a reason not to. Takes Tubbo's hands and leads them both in a dance. He twirls them around like he would at court, takes immense pleasure in thinking about what his father would look like watching them. Giddily spins Tubbo under one of his arms. 
probably would have that subtle little I'm really pissed off and trying not to show it expression. You know, the one that makes him look constipated. And Rompu laughs, mean-spirited and elated. Eyes easily finding Tubbo's braid nestled in his hair, little bead shining at the end, and trills at the sight. What would he say if he knew, if he knew you married a commoner, that you married outside of your race? It's easy to imagine. Disgrace, disappointment, black mark. He'd be furious, livid. Might actually prompt him to lose that emotionless mask he wears. Rattle him enough that he lets something through besides bland disinterest. Pulling Tubbo closer, Rambu wishes for half a second he was back at Voidfall, just so he can rub it in his father's face how happy he is, how well he's doing. Dips Tubbo for the hell of it, because he loves him, because it makes him laugh loud and bright. It doesn't register until later, as Rambu's sitting at a table, everyone crowded close, hoarsely singing the worst rendition of Happy Birthday he's ever heard. Tebo sliding a purple, misshapen cake in front of him, sloppy icing all over it, his name little more than looping smears on the top. That he is happy. Rambu stares at all the people gathered here, the ones that all cheer at the end of their song, wait for him to blow the candles out, none of them seeming to have realized no one lit the candles in the first place. And Rambu cares for them so much laughs so hard at their frantic scramble to fix it, he has to prop himself up. Zeph, don't set the table on fire this time. Dream jokingly orders as Zephyr lines up all the candles in their sightline, wings flaring as they lean down and a wicked grin curls their lips up, voice lilting in sing-song. No promises, dweamy. They get the candles in one go. Blue flames only end up melting them about halfway down, cover the entire top of the cake in colorful wax, and Rambu can't stop laughing. Shakily blows them out as everyone screams at him to make a wish, and he wishes for this night not to end. For the light, soaring, feeling in his chest to never fade, wants to stay transfixed in this moment for as long as possible. Rambu thought the cake was just dyed to mimic the ones back home, but the fork clatters out of his fingers after he shoved a bite into his mouth, ears rocketing up as he whips to boggle at Tubbo. Hastily swallows what's in his mouth, heady flavor of cloves and rich florals coating his tongue as he stammers. Where in the hell did you get chorus fruit? Grinning around his own fork, Tubbo shrugs, swaggers up to Ronbu and hip-checks him lightly, tips his head to the side and winks. Let's just say I know a guy. We brought them back from Anwil yesterday. Monto yells from across the room, and Tubbo rounds on him. Fork brandished like it's a blaster. Shut the fuck up, Monto! I'm trying to woo my partner by being fucking cool and mysterious! That sets off a round of raucous laughter, and Tubbo vehemently tells everyone to shut the fuck up at least twice before any of them listen. But he's still grumbling under his breath as he shovels chorus cake into his mouth. Licking icing off his fork, Rambu goes to slouch against the wall next to him, nudges his shoulder to get his attention, and says lowly, Hey, I was plenty wooed. You're the best wooer of them all. The wooiest. Oh, shut up. Tubbo laughs fondly, knocking into him back, and they stand all pressed against one another as they finish their cake, the party winding down since people still have missions and things to do tomorrow. Rambu offers once to help clean up, and gets shoved unceremoniously onto the couch. Ozzy, clambering over the side after him, sits cross-legged with their pointy as fuck knees digging into Ronbu's leg as they play solidum on their handhelds, bitching and slapping at each other in regular intervals. Hey, Tubbo said not to bring things, but fuck him affectionately. I am my own sentient bag of bones. Ozzy declares after they've just won, again, how the fuck are they so good at this stupid game? Fishes around in the pocket of their bomber and holds out a closed fist to Ronbu, opening it to drop a small object into his waiting hands. It looks like a bracelet of some kind, maroon red cording wrapped around a thin piece of off-white material, and Ronbu runs a claw over the intricate design, has half a thought it kinda looks like bone, and then freezes because it kinda looks like bone. Ancients of the 
deep. Ozzy, this better not be... He's cut off by loud peals of echoing laughter. Ozzy's jaw wagging back and forth as their eyes sputter in mirth. And their hands jump up, fingers all fanned out. Intentional smile. Departed ones! That's amazing, but no. It's from an animal on my planet. Uh, um, how do you say banner, binger, boner, doesn't matter. It doesn't translate anyway. But yeah, we take their bones and carve jewelry from it to give to friends and family. So, there you go. Now, a lot less concerned. Rambu flips the little bracelet around, picking out all the strange, looping designs carved into the bone shard. Wide grins of ominous-looking animals, rectangles nestled into one another, hair thin lines filling up empty space. A skeletal finger wreathed in shadows pokes at his, and Rambu looks up at the sharp angle of Ozzy's muzzle, razor-sharp fangs perpetually bared in a macabre smile, flashing eyes that have never looked at him with anything besides kindness. Happy name day, Kostka. I'd mourn for you long into the night. It's a little eerie and off-putting if you don't know them, but Rambu thinks he understands what it means in the context of their culture. Care for you. Always cared for you. Sucks in a shaky breath and reaches forward to drag Ozzy into a hug, tucking his chin over their shoulder as he whispers back, I'd mourn for you too, Ozzy. He fits the bracelet around his right wrist, likes how the maroon cord contrasts nicely with the green brocade at the end of his sleeves. Settles closer to Ozzy as they go through short video clips on their handheld. Ozzy, desperately trying to impart how hilarious they are on a squinting Ronbu, laughs more at his expressions than whatever's playing. I am cared for. I am actually cared for this time. Eddie's back and forth gently in Ronbu's mind, like the tides out in the sands, as they all head back to their rooms in one big clump, people talking with him, joking with him like they like him, and he almost can't believe it that this is his life. He thanks everyone profusely for tonight, and gets many hugs in return. A jolting one from Dream that makes all his hair stand up. Brief pat on the arm from George, wincing as Zephyr nearly cracks his spine in two. Another one from Ozzy as they bound ahead after Manto, leave him and Tubbo alone at their door with a final wave. Their room is pleasantly dim and quiet when they stumble inside, Ronbu beyond worn out, but in a wonderful way, flops down onto their bunk and grins like a doofus up at the stars on the ceiling. Hey. Tubbo calls. Only warning Ronbu gets before he's flopping down across him, the sudden weight punching all the air out of his lungs. I'ma go, like, wash my face and stuff, but wanna watch a movie before bed? Sh sure. Rambu wheezes, slapping at Tubbo, who laughs as he rolls off to get his stuff together. Acts like he's dying in a bid for sympathy, at least, until the door swishes shut. Clicking his tongue against his teeth at how heartless his husband is, Rambu hauls himself up and figures he should get ready for settling down time as well. Hums under his breath as he starts taking his earrings out. He lays them in neat rows in their jewelry box, Shuts the lid and sets the whole thing on the built-in shelving by his bunk, somewhere he'll have easy access to it tomorrow. Next comes the hair comb, and Rambu pulls it out delicately, takes a second to admire how beautiful it is, fingers tracing along golden petals reverentially as he sets it in its case. Stores this one in his dresser because it's not really a day-to-day -day piece. Today has been absolutely unreal. The best name day Rambu can ever remember having, even counting those when his mother was still alive. And he presses a hand into his face, unsurprised to find a soft smile there, muscles protesting after so much use. Perhaps for the first time in his entire life, Rambu's not really worried about tomorrow, knows he's going to wake up in his husband's arms, that they'll probably grab breakfast with their friends pick a mission together, fly out in their ship and see some new corner of the galaxy. It sounds too good to be true. And that thought sends a frightened jolt through him. But it's okay. It's fine. He's okay now. Yeah, but for how long? And Rambu wets his lips, tries to remind himself not to panic, 
but it's bubbling up suddenly. The desperate, clawing fear of, how long is this going to last? How long do you have until you're back there, clinging onto life, waiting every second to stop breathing? No, no. He's fine now. He's okay. He got through it, and he's learned some new things, and he can do this. He has his husband. He has his friends. They'll help him. They'll keep him safe. They'll lie to you. No, they will. That's what they've always done. And Rambus Claus flex, paranoia flaring down his spine as he whips his head around, but no one's there. He's hearing things again. Frantic inhale because he's hearing things again. No, 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 no! Did you really think we left? Stupid boy. You've never listened a day in your life. I don't know why you would have started now. Snarling under his breath, Rambu whips his tail back and forth, eyes narrowing as he looks for the hem of her dress. The swift line of the crop striking her palm. Spits back. You're not real. Leave me alone. Of course I'm not real. I'm all in your head. Just like those friendships you've dreamed up. Do you honestly think any of them enjoy your company? And there, purple dress puddling onto the floor, ridged line of her spine, his first demon, glaring down at him, never good enough. And Maliri blinks at him slowly, lips pulling up in a sneer. What was lesson number one, your highness? Don't you remember? Of course he remembers. He remembers every fucked up thing she ever taught him. All one hundred lessons drilled into his head from the time he could walk, forced to stand bolt upright for hours at a time, snaps his teeth at her and yells, I said, go away. I don't need you anymore. Don't need me. Maliri scoffs, advances like the unstoppable sweep of storm winds, howling, shrieking, power, and razor-thin shards of sand that slice exposed skin to ribbons. What an idiot thing to say. Where would you be without me? Taken advantage of by every simpleton under the sun? Ridiculed? Used? Don't be ridiculous. You need me more than you could ever possibly know. It sounds so inevitable, coming out of her mouth, that Rambu almost buckles, bows his head in acquiescence. But then he remembers all the days he's been free. How light he's felt. Startling lack of anxiety as he interacts with people. Not constantly worried about being betrayed and doesn't want to go back to the reverse. Paranoid and twitchy and constantly looking over his shoulder. He's tired of it. Knows that no one here wants to hurt him. That he doesn't have to be like this anymore. And Rambu squares his shoulders. Meets her searing green gaze and barks. I do not need you. I never have. You've done nothing but poison my head and heart from the beginning, so get lost. Maliri reels back, thunderous expression lighting up her features as she snaps. I made you, boy! Never forget that! Standing there, head in a daze, letting her words and lessons pour out of his mouth, watching blankly at what it does to the people around him. I'm the one that nurtured you. Instinctual flinches that are driven out of him until absolutely nothing remains, a shell of a person, of a child. I'm the one that taught you how to survive. Glancing without looking, hyper-aware of everything, taught fear, taught anxiety, taught panic, never safe, never secure, always alone. I'm the only one that ever looked at you, and yet still I hated you. What does that say? What does that say about you? Just go- Shut up! Rambu screams, furious fire burning under his skin, in his veins as he surges forwards, gets right up in her face and snarls savagely. Shut up, shut up! You didn't make me, you fucking destroyed me! I- I hated myself because of you. Because of all of you! Ungrateful little heathen. She hisses, but Rambu tosses his head to the side, voice low and rough as he growls. Get. Out. Now. You can't get rid of me. You need me. Don't have the gall, the spine, wretched little thing. And he snaps, fist flying back, ready to smash through her face. But she's gone. Appears wavering off to the side, and he rounds on her, shrieking. I said get out! I've never needed you. Never! 
All you've ever done is hurt me and taught me how to hurt others. How to hate. And I'm sick of it. I kept you safe. I made sure you survived. I you made sure I was alone. Rambu screams. Years of pent-up anger and frustrations boiling to the surface. Long, endless nights huddled in his bed, thinking that's the best he was ever going to get. Solitude yawning before him like the drop off the parapets. You made sure I had no one else to rely on. You can't trust anyone, you have to know that. And it's standing outside a study room, the world dropping out from under him. It's scrabbling back and away from the person you think you love, swinging fists at you. It's the fear that everyone crowded around singing has a knife hidden behind their backs. And Rambu swallows harsh. Insistent, shaking, starting in his limbs, and Maliria latches her claws in and yanks. They're lying to you. Have to see it. Have to know. Smiles that don't reach as high as they should. No, he's imagining things. Don't let her get to you. Can't be this dumb. Can't trust them. Whispered conversations he wasn't a part of. Was it on purpose? No, no, no. Calm down. Don't let her. Can't trust anyone. Screaming anger and shaking fists. Red high on his face. Wings flared open. He hates you. You think you love him. Kept you safe. Long scratches gouged into his arms. Kept you alive. Sharp whistle of wind in his ears. Ground rushing up to meet him. Made sure you survived. Laying there, waiting to die. I made you. Enough! Rambu bellows, cutting an arm straight through Maliri's torso. Shatters her apart into dissolving shadows. Barrest whisper behind him, and he whips around, trying to find where she's gone. I said, enough! Stop pretending like you ever cared for me. Stop acting like you raised me. Stop talking to me like you never abused me. I've kept you alive. There, behind him. And Rambu jerks around, sees her standing at the far side of the room. And it's like every memory of every lesson with her as a child hits him. Standing in the center of the room, with her lording over him, narrowed eyes boring into his and picking him apart at the seams. And enough. He's not doing this anymore. He's done. This is it. The end. The last lesson. I tried to kill myself because of you. He seethes, taking one shaking step forwards, muscles bunching up like they're ready for an attack. I threw myself off the palace. Because of all of you. That's your legacy to me. That's the only thing you've ever done for me. Rambu takes another step, and it's more sure. He doesn't shake, but she starts to. The only thing you ever taught me was how to be a monster. Made me paranoid and afraid of people, but I know better than you now, and guess what? You don't know shit. Her mouth opens, like she's saying something, but he can't hear anything. Vicious triumph rolling in his veins because she's finally quiet. Finally listening to him. Finally doesn't have a say. Slashes a hand through the air and wants to laugh as it cuts a vast sweep into her form. I have a caryad who loves me. Friends who care for me. A job. Ha! <laughs> me! A job! And I'm good at it. I'm smart, and I'm capable, and people like me. You keep telling me you're the reason I survived, but I don't want to just survive anymore. I want to live. Rambu declares vehemently, swipes another hand through the air and does laugh this time, as more of her dissolves. Takes cruel delight in shredding her apart like how she's shredded him for years. For his whole life. But she doesn't control him. Not anymore. You listen to me, you... You stupid bitch! Ancients, what a head rush. What simple joy and ecstasy there is in standing in front of her and saying everything he's always wanted. Strides forward, confidently, and tears the last of her out of existence. Get the fuck out of my head. Get the fuck out of my life. Get the fuck out of my memories. I never want to see or speak to you ever again. Do you understand me? There's nothing there by the time the last word has left his mouth. And Rambu chokes out startled laughter. Pulse loud and drumming in his ears because holy shit. Holy shit, he did it. 
Ancients, he did it. She's gone. She's really gone. He knows. He can feel it, raised around the edges like a scar, but she's gone. Hands shaking. Too much emotion. She's gone. He did it. She's gone. She's gone. So happy. She's... Who are you talking to? And everything freezes over. No, 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 no. Heart dead in his chest. Air strangled in his lungs. No, 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 no. Not real. This isn't real. Has to be another one. Not real. But when Rambu woodenly turns to look behind him, standing in the doorway, perfectly solid and perfectly horrified, is Tubbo. <laughs>